Hey YouTube, welcome back to our channel. So today, obviously from the title, I'm gonna be telling you how to get into Howard University, the Mecca, period. The best HBCU in the planet, period. It's that time of year where early decisions are applications are coming to a closing time um i didn't do early decision personally i did regular decision but this video is about howard applications in general so whether you're applying for early decision or you're applying for regular decision this video can help you out so don't go anywhere stay tuned and find out how to have the perfect howard application Today we are going to be discussing basically your personal essay, your SAT scores, your resumes, your extracurriculars, your volunteering, all of that good stuff. <laughs> Jalen is in the background making so much noise, but <laughs> we're going to be talking about all that good stuff to make your Howard application amazing. So I'm going to start off with SATs because I know this is what people worry about the most when they're applying to colleges. So personally, I'm going to talk about my personal experience, obviously, because I don't know nobody else's. So my SAT score was in 1170. Now, I don't think that's that good for me, like, because the average, I think, was like a 1250. And like all my friends were getting 1250s. And I was like, OK, well, I got an 1170. So yeah and i took the sat like four times and i think the first time i got like a 1040 and this is all because i'm terrible at taking tests like when it comes to like big tests i'm i'm not good at it sats all that all that stuff it's not for me i'm better in the classroom so yeah i took the sat like four times and that was my score just make sure when you're taking the sat you know you you know take all the opportunities you can to study you know they have reading um science and math i think or that's the act they have reading and math and then grammar i think the sat has but don't let the fool you because that grammar section i i have never been so confused ever in my life so make sure you get that sat prep book and you are studying and working hard and take your time and manage your time when you are taking the sat and i cannot stress this enough take your time and manage your time so do not rush through it and when you are finished don't just put your head down and go to sleep like me don't do that. <laughs> Make sure you go back in. If you have time, reread the story, check your double check your answers, redo those math problems, recheck that grammar, and you know, be the grammar please. Make sure you check yourself. Make sure you are double checking, you are double reading. Do not waste any second you get on your SAT. Do not take it for granted because I did. And you see my score, 1170. But that's not bad though. So it's not bad, but it could have been better if I would have used my time correctly. So I encourage you guys to do that to the fullest extent. In my opinion, I don't think Howard really pays attention to the SAT score that much um, because their motto is truth and service. So I think they care more about the extracurricular activities and your volunteering more than they care about. I'm not saying they don't care about education, not saying that, but if you have a good extracurricular and good volunteering under your belt, then I think you got a pretty good chance and you guys are going to get in if you're applying so you know when you get to campus holler at me next i'm going to be going into the resume part of the application and like what i had on my resume and what i think is the most important parts of a resume if the most important parts of a resume at the top of the resume you have your student summary like basically just a summary about who you are what kind of student you're you know like you're what you're applying for you want to do the summary of why you think you're fit for that, for what you're applying for. I think that's really important because as soon as you open a resume, that is the first thing you look at. So mine says, I am a versatile honor student with a record of academic and extracurricular success. In recent years, I have obtained many leadership qualities to make me a more well-rounded individual when working in a team setting. I am also a very motivated student. I always give 110% when given a task, and I also love to learn new things to help improve my knowledge and myself. So that is the first thing people see when they open my resume. And I think that's pretty good, because they're like, dang, she got some. She's a versatile honor student. Period. <laughs> so I feel like you have to have a really good, like the summary has to have like, you have to grab their attention, you know, like that. 
right? And so extracurricular activities, honestly, in high school, I was, I think in every club, almost every club. But when you're in extracurricular activities, you don't just wanna be like in clubs and just be a general member of every club. Howard is very big on like leadership and you know, truth and service. So you wanna have clubs that you, you know, have leadership positions in, like you wanna have some clubs that you're president in, you wanna have some clubs that you're secretary and vice president, you know, historian. Then it's gonna show that you're dedicated to your extracurricular activities. So for me, um, I was vice president of the sports management and advertisement service hospitality in my um, smash, that's the short version. I was vice president of that club and that was basically all about sports and sports management and stuff. Um, I was the secretary of HOSA and that's Health Occupational Students of America. Um, I was the secretary slash president of this model club that I started at my school. Um, and yeah, basically, oh, and I was also a part of um, a really good organization. It's called Mentoring Tomorrow's Leaders. And basically it's just like all about mentoring. It's really big on like, you know, helping others and all that stuff. So like I said, focus on truth and service. So all the clubs that I put on my application always had to do with, you know, like giving back and stuff that I genuinely enjoy doing, you know, as a person, you know, I like helping others. I, you know, I'm into that kind of stuff. So I put all that on my resume and I made sure that Howard knew I was servicing, period. So, next i'm going to talk about my gpa so my gpa in high school the weighted one was a 4.2 and then my academic core gpa was a 3.9 so yeah you know i honestly education is important like the statistic of your application is important so don't just you know like you know throw away oh well they care about truth and service so all i gotta do is have good extracurricular activities because no, obviously, you know, it is the top HBCU in the United States. So, you know, they want some, you know, smarties coming in. So keep that in mind as well. And next, I'm going to talk about volunteering. So my volunteering, I didn't have like a whole bunch of stuff. I just put the stuff that I was like dedicated to and I did do over, you know, over and over again. I had a total of, I think, 503 community service hours. So... You want to make sure you have a lot of community service hours so they know you're out there serving like i said before period so um i had i was volunteering at this place called feeding south florida i was a teaching assistant at miramar high school like a ta and then i volunteered at like women's shelters with my sister society group and then i did like um i volunteered at like community centers with my some of my clubs at my high school so things that i volunteered at a lot is what i put on my volunteer section because i didn't want to put like a place that i volunteered like once for like three hours because just like okay like you volunteer once for three hours but, like now what you know so you want to make sure you put stuff that you show that you put work into like you put your heart and your soul into on your resume so they know what you actually care about and what you know you actually enjoy doing because they're going to want you as a student and they're going to be looking at what you can bring to their campus so next thing I'm going to talk about is your personal essay. Now from mine, I believe the question that I was responding to was what is um, an accomplishment that you have, you know, what is your proudest accomplishment or something along the lines of that. But I believe if I'm correct, I'm not really sure, but most colleges give you like a list of questions and you can pick one question from the list that they have. Um, I don't know if that's how Howard did it, but yeah, this is the topic that I was writing on. So I guess that's the question they had. I don't know if it's still the same today, but yeah. And I'm gonna read you like the first couple of um, sentences of my personal essay. So you guys can get a like understanding of what, you know, I wrote and what grabbed the Howard admissions attention. So um, like I said, I'm talking about an accomplishment that I'm proud of. So it starts like, in this past school year, I've had an amazing accomplishment that not a lot of students get to say they experience. In my AP government class, every student had to pick a four person group and come up with a bill proposal that they would present to the Florida representative district of 104, Richard Stark. So we made a bill proposal and we were presenting it to one of the, um, to one of, not the Howard representatives. Oh brother, this guy stinks! To one of the Florida representatives, cause I'm originally from Florida. So I went to school in Florida. Yeah. And um, 
So basically how the essay goes is that I made a bill proposal, presented it to a Florida representative, and then he took it to the Florida House of Representatives and he was encouraging it to get passed as a, um, as a bill, like as a law in Florida. So yeah, that's what my accomplishment was. And we won that competition, obviously, because it's an accomplishment. But it's even an accomplishment like participating in something like that. So, you know, make sure you like find unique things to talk about, something that's like really important to you. So when you're writing it in the essay, the admissions office can like see that this is something you're proud of and this is something that you're passionate about. Because one thing about Howard, they care about how genuine you are as a person. Like they don't want you to be fake. They don't want you to be like, oh yeah, list all these things that you really don't care about. They genuinely care about what you care about. They wanna know who you are. So, you know, don't try to be fake and come up with this big accomplishment. And then in the essay, they can tell that you're like, you know, you're just talking, you're not being passionate about it, you know? So you wanna keep that in mind. Always put your best real foot forward. Don't make up nothing. Don't try to be somebody you're not because Howard don't mess with that. And I know that, I can tell you that for a fact. And when it comes to turning in your application, guys, don't be scared, don't be nervous. You guys are going to get in. You guys are all perfect. You guys are great. And Howard would be lucky to have all of you guys, period. You know what Howard says, H-U, you know. Well, when you guys get there, you'll, you'll know the saying, but that's the saying. Okay, so I will see you guys around campus because after watching this video, your applications are gonna be perfect. So since I gave you guys all my tips and tricks for the Howard applications, this is sadly the end of the video. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys turn on those post notifications and make sure you guys follow me and my sister on Instagram, period. And make sure you guys follow me and my sister on TikTok, period. And as you guys all know, when the channel gets a poppin', there ain't no stopping. period. So and next time, don't go nowhere. Post notifications, like, comment, and subscribe.